Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. Wow, I have a real pleasure of introducing our State Assemblyman of the 23rd Assembly District, mm -hmm. Mr. Joe Cotto. So welcome, Joe. Well, thank welcome, you for, for the opportunity to be here. It's a real pleasure to have you here. I know you've been a big supporter of Native issues and legislation. And right now you're awaiting a bill to be signed by the governor. Tell us about that. Yeah, one. that's correct. It's AB 2641, uh, which was a bill that I introduced. And the sponsors, the sponsor of the legislation were the uh, uh, San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, th there were two, three other tribes that, uh, that, that worked with us in introducing the legislation and working with it. The Pechanga tribe from San Diego mm -hmm. uh, was another tribe that was very, very active in it. And the um, Viejas tribe also from San Diego. They were also mm -hmm. very intimately involved in helping. It was basically, it's the, the initial title of the bill was called Sacred Sites. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do was to afford the same dignity and respect for Native American uh, burial grounds as we afford other populations in the state. So that in the event that a property owner, uh, during the course of a development or during the course of anything, mm -hmm. discovers uh, multiple graves, that then there are some steps that have to be taken to protect those sacred, uh, those sacred sites, mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, that appropriate action is taken to conserve and to protect the sites and not just build over them or right. remove them or whatever the case might be. The Native American Heritage Commission is called uh, when they find uh, a site where there are multiple graves as an example. Mm -hmm. And then what they have to do is that they have to contact the, the most likely dis descendants and have to have discussions with them about that. And then they have to actually discuss, negotiate, discuss actually with the landowners to see what would be the most appropriate method of providing uh, uh, providing respect and dignity to those, uh, you know, to the mm -hmm. to the sacred sites. Um, there was um, a lot of debate about the legislation. We were able to get it out of the the assembly the first time on a on a uh, on a partisan vote, and then it went over to the Senate, and it also was on a partisan vote. And then it was amended there in the Senate. And then when it came over to the assembly again for concurrence, then it received a 69 to zero vote with uh, many members wow. of the Republican Party and all of the members of the Democratic Party approving the legislation. So we're very excited about that. It's on the governor's desk. We have been in touch with his staff, telling him about the legislation and telling how we were working with the Building Industry Association mm -hmm. and other groups to try to make sure that we had a bill that made sense and that everyone could work with. But in the end, what we were interested in, again, providing the same dignity and respect mm -hmm. to uh, Native American sacred sites that are provided to other populations in the state. So we're very excited about that. We expect that the, it's going to get signed by the governor and then it will become the, uh, the law of the state of California. Let's say, um, let's just, just go, have you established like a protocol? Let's, for example, let's say you find you know, the con or workers find a, a well, burial ground. Did they find ground. some by San Jose State recently? Yeah. Yes. Let's yes. say they find a, a, a burial site. Have you guys established a protocol on how you're going to do things? I know you said earlier you're going to contact the, the, the most likely, the most likely relative. The most likely relative, most likely descendants, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and then the the uh, the most likely descendants have a period of time within where which they recommend to the landowner mm -hmm. what is the best way to provide protection for those burial sites. Mm -hmm. And then they provide that, their recommendations to the landowner. And then there's the process of saying what is the best way to accomplish yeah. this. So is there, and then the Native American uh, uh, Heritage Commission, of course, also plays into it. Mm -hmm. So that then not just the, the, the human remains, but also any uh, artifacts that are found, any any Indian native artifacts that are found are also afforded the same kind of protection. So it was a very difficult thing to get done for, yeah. for a lot of reasons, what but kind fortunately of it was approved. What opposition did you have? I'm curious. Well, that it, that it, that it would stop, that if, if, if uh, a landowner has a project and mm -hmm. 
a landowner wants to build housing as an example and mm -hmm. and has this development and all of a sudden right in the midst of it they discovered some sacred sites that then that might delay the project and that you know that uh, people that are working on the project might mm -hmm. not be able to work and it would delay and that all the costs involved and uh, but uh, so so that was the initial reaction and then there was also the question about getting very specific about the definitions mm -hmm. uh, so that we went from from a sacred site to to uh, a sacred site uh, with human remains as the as the and, and we defined all of that we also said that there would be a timeline 30 day 30 day mm -hmm. timeline in which to accomplish the whole thing they were afraid that it was going to go on forever and ever but ultimately yeah. uh, you know we all resolved those and it was to the satisfaction, first of all, of, uh, of the sponsors who were San Manuel Mission Indians and, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the Pechanga tribes and, and uh, other tribes who, who sent uh, a lot of letters of support. In fact, we had support from most uh, uh, Native American, uh, you know, Native tribes in the state mm -hmm. supporting the bill. So we were able to work it out and very excited with it. So now the last part, of course, is the and when do you anticipate that? Happening? Well, he has till the 30th, so it's by this Friday. He has wow. until Friday to sign Friday it? Friday to sign the bill, He's yeah. going to sign it, right? Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's going to sign it. That's great. Now, you know, during the um, governor election, they were talking about all these ads about Indians should pay, pay their fair share and all those, you know, all that propaganda. What is going on with gaming? Well, what, what, is, what is happening now is that the five of the major, major tribes have negotiated uh, have, re have negotiated new compacts with the governor, and the compacts uh, will extend the the original compacts, which were to expire in the year 2020. Mm -hmm. Now they go for an additional 10 years, and in some cases it will double the number of of machines that uh, each of the tribes can have. Uh, and while that is going on, though there will be significant amounts of revenue that will come to the state of California for those additional uh, additional uh, uh, machines mm -hmm. that, that are going to be uh, allowed in each of the tribes. So it's, uh, it's kind of a win-win in a case. More revenue for the tribes, but more revenue also for the state of California. Yeah. And it also provides more stability since now uh, the the compacts will go till the year 2030. So now you have an idea about what where gaming is going to go, at least with the five major tribes in the state of California. So there's some real pluses. We're going to take that up in January when uh, yeah. when uh, we come back to the next session. So that was a good good. What I think is um, a lot of uh, Californians are forgetting is these nations, these Native American nations, are sovereign nations. And for some reason, a lot of the Californians think that they need to pay their fair share. But they're a sovereign nation within a nation, and they have their own rights and their own sovereignty. And basically, you know, they have paid their fair share. You know, they lost most of their land. You know, they went through genocide. They went through a lot of different things that really pushed them back. Um, physically and mentally, and they're still here. You know, they paid a lot already, and that's what a lot of Californians need to understand. Oh, without, without, without a doubt. I mean, it's yeah. a very difficult concept for for some Americans to understand mm -hmm. this notion that when you are discussing with a with a tribe, uh, uh, that that it's really a nation to nation relationship. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. not. It is not. Uh, like you know, with one city communicating with another city, but it's a sovereign nation, yeah. and and uh, in in the territory of the reservation where that nation exists, then those decisions about how to govern the lives of the people in the nation are uh, you know it's the sovereign responsibility of the tribe itself. You know, we tend to think that all we do is pass a law and then everyone right, has everybody. to do what we say, yeah. but that's not not the case. Yeah. And, and as I said, this this. Um, uh, these negotiated compacts uh, do require the legislature to approve those because I think as you know the first the the, the federal government has to designate a uh, you know do an appropriate designation then after the designation is occurs then one can get into gaming if they so so desire 
and then the ultimate step, of course, is for the legislature to approve it. But I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, yeah. paid paid a million times over what uh, sure. what uh, what uh, uh, you know what we expect them to pay, without a doubt. I, I think it's it was misleading you know a lot of the people mm -hmm. just thought oh yeah they should be paying you know I mean just from the a lot of the ads negative mm -hmm. ads that were being put out there let me ask you a question what do you think about Native Americans you know sovereign nations joining the United Nations do you think they should or do you think the United Nations should put a, a hand out and say hey you're a sovereign nation we need to pull you into this because I don't think right now that there are any Native sovereign nations being represented in the United Nations no. Yeah. No, no, there are there aren't any. There, mm -hmm. there, as, as far as I understand, the the uh, it would be a good idea. The yeah. uh, the, the the only the only uh, uh, not caution, but the only thing we ought to keep in mind, of course, is that every one of the tribes is their own nation. Yeah, they're their own sovereign nation. So you'd have to deal with yeah. with. San Manuel Band of Mission Indians, you'd have to deal with Pechanga, yeah. you'd have to deal with Morongo, you'd have to deal with them individually because they then, are their own nation. Then they would probably have to form a federation of United there, Nations. That could be a way to do it. And then join that way. That yeah. could be a way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, Indian yeah. nations. So. By the way, I had a chance the other day, <laughs> if I may tell you about this, uh, I was a keynote speaker at, um, at uh, San Bernardino State University. They had their annual, it was their eighth, the eighth, the eighth annual uh, Native American Education Day. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a legislation that, it, that was introduced by uh, then uh, Assembly Member Joe Baca, Sr., who introduced the bill designating the fourth Friday in September as Native American Education Day. And I had the honor of being the keynote speaker, so I was down there uh, oh, well, uh, talking to students and talking to, to uh, the leadership of, uh, of, uh, of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. They bring kids from different tribes and it was just very very exciting uh, yeah. what they're doing you know the idea of helping young people to retain their language and culture and that we we have to remember where we came from and how how what our language is what our culture is what exactly. our history has been and as I said this is the eighth year James Ramos I think is the the, pr the premier leader of that uh, annual event so very exciting Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're having one in San Jose this year yeah. for the first time <laughs> at San Jose City Hall. We're going to have a program on November 2nd, an all-day program with uh, another program in the evening and have dancers and speakers and entertainers and honoring the elders. So hopefully you'll be in town for that event. I'd be, be honored to be there. Let me ask you a question. As an assemblyman standing on the outside looking in, what would you have to tell the Native American youths of this country, or even California, you know, of how they should try to empower themselves, you know, as maybe to get into politics or anything like that, or any kind of way that they could uh, make their cause a little bit stronger. Well, one of the one of the things that I said at the conference with the other day was that, that uh, about six percent of Native American kids have BA degrees, mm -hmm. and that's half of what the majority population has. And what I would say to them is that it's very important that they graduate from a university, mm -hmm. that, they then, um, that they then provide leadership to make sure that more Native youngsters also attend the university and graduate, mm -hmm. and that they also then take steps to engage the Native community in, in, in what we call civic engagement, mm -hmm. make sure that we're all registered to vote, make sure that we do go vote, and make sure that like James Ramos, who ran for the uh, Community College District Board and was successful, he is a member of the uh, San Bernardino Community College District Board, that we get more Native Americans to run for office and get elected, and that that is a way that they can have the, the, the voice and the platform to be able to advocate for Native communities. So I think that, that's what I would say to them. Great. It's a good message. Yeah. How, what's the voting numbers for Native Americans in California? Well, the, number, the numbers are, as okay. we, uh, because of what uh, we mentioned a few seconds ago, I mean, we, we practically did away. I mean, the genocide so We need of the people population. to get out to register Absolute, to, to vote. Register to vote, Absolutely. to register to vote. I mean, uh, 
uh, it's, it's so very, very important. Yes. If everyone gets registered to vote, then you have yeah. a stronger voice. That's, stronger voice. I mean, that's the one time when, when an individual's voice is as strong as a millionaire or billionaire's voice, right? Because mm -hmm. they only have one vote on yeah. that specific day. So it's an important function to yeah. get our young people to, uh, to become involved. With. Now, what other legislation are you working on that impacts Native people? I know something to do with uh, charter schools. We're looking at charter schools. I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I attended. I went to a uh, to the Soboba Indian uh, Nation uh, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and they have a school there, Noli High School, that it's called. And what they've been able to do is very successfully bring uh, Native youngsters from several tribes, from many tribes who all attend this one high school. Uh, and the reason they were doing that was because uh, when you look at what's going on educationally in the state, 90% of our Native American kids attend a public school. Mm -hmm. and, and, but because the numbers are so small, very often the school does not provide enough focus or mm -hmm. enough support or enough attention to our native youngsters, so some some of our youngsters begin to drop out and lose interest and yeah. and right. don't stay in their schooling. So one one way of addressing that would be to look at the notion of uh, of some charter schools where we might create one prototype that can serve as a model up and down the state that we can then replicate in several parts mm -hmm. of the state, mm -hmm. where whenever our youngsters are being lost in the public school. There's a, there's a safety net to bring yeah. them and keep them in school, make sure that they graduate, and either return them back to the public school or graduate them from the school itself, like Noli does. I was able yeah. to go to their graduation. Very exciting graduation ceremony. The whole community comes out. Yeah. And it's just support. a very, very, uh, just a moving, moving yeah. uh, event uh, when there's so much pride in the fact that these youngsters are graduating from high school. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we're working on that one as, yeah, as another piece wonderful. of legislation. Yeah. Definitely. I definitely don't know if do. you heard about the elementary school down in Los Angeles, and they teach Nahuatl and Mandarin and English and Spanish at the school, and they're under attack by they're up for renewal of their um, accreditation, mm -hmm. and there's a. Um, a conservative radio station who has taken them on as a project and saying that it's a terrorist organization and training because they're teaching these Indian languages and um, they're preparing them to be terrorists. It's, and they've really... It's really racist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's really they're crazy. a member of the National Council of Adasa, but they are a, a native school down in uh, Los Angeles and they're having a lot, a lot of problems mm -hmm. with the renewal of their charter because of this um, radio station yeah. that's taken them mm -hmm. on. So, you know, it, it's yeah. difficult. It, you know, we really need schools like that that'll provide that support system yeah. for the yeah. kids. Oh, I, I agree. You know, there's, in, in, in the ideal world, in the best of all worlds, uh, Native youngsters would go to a public school and, and they would be treated with respect and dignity and would be offered mm -hmm. the same opportunity that all youngsters were. Yeah. There would be opportunities for them to, uh, to learn their Native language, right. to study their history and culture. Yeah. The real history, not the slanted one that we've taught in the public schools for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, un under the best of circumstances, that would be the idea, so that youngsters of different ethnic backgrounds would value and appreciate, uh, uh, y you know, the history and the culture of, yeah. of, of a native nation of, uh, of youngsters from different tribes. Uh, but until we arrive at that point, we've got to have a safety net, an opportunity for yeah youngsters that get lost and fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. We've got to have a way of supporting them and keeping them engaged and making sure that they graduate and go on to that university. Yeah, definitely. You know, when I was going up through high school, it was like there was nothing about who I am. Um, a lot of the stuff that was written down in the books was pretty derogatory and it didn't make any sense to me and it actually, you know, put me down. So yeah, it would really be nice to have something like that, yeah. charter schools, more of them. To be able to do that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So what are your plans, Joe, for the future? Well, you know, I have, I'm just completing my first, uh, my first term. I have... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you you've know, done a lot. I've, yeah, I have, I've been, <laughs> have, have had good, good success. Mm -hmm. uh, have eight bills that were approved this year. I had four last year that oh, were signed by the governor. I've got eight this year, and he's already signed uh, 
four of them. One of them deals with uh, reading first that I'm waiting for him to sign off on. Uh, and then the second one is the sacred sites legislation, 2641. Mm -hmm. I have another one that deals with youngsters who don't speak English mm -hmm. and, and uh, f to provide funding for schools that have large numbers of kids who don't speak English to again strengthen their ability to, to mm -hmm. learn the English language mm -hmm. and to experience success in school, to train their teachers on what's the best methods to do it. So we're very excited about that legislation. I have another uh, legislation that he's already signed that extends the Healthy Start program okay. so that now uh, the insurance program, the Healthy Start, mm -hmm. Healthy Families Insurance Program, it was supposed to expire this coming year. Now he signed it so it'll continue. Uh, so then we'll be able to en enroll our youngsters in, mm -hmm. in, in the health insurance program. So that was kind of very, very exciting. So, but I'm, you know, I'm up for re-election again in, in, on, on June the 7th, and I know we probably can't talk about that here, but <laughs> you asked what are my plans to get reelected, and then... The, wow, we need you there. We'll go back <laughs> I mean, and some other... Let, uh, let, two, yeah. two ways about it. <laughs> Definitely. Let me give a story out to the community so they could sway their votes to Mr. <laughs> Joe Cotto. Um, there was a, a local, there's a local uh, education center that needed some help, and they, 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 had, they were in a predicament, and I can say who they were, and they're a Native American group, and Mr. Joe Cotto called them and helped them you know, tried to help them out. And, you know, how many times do you have an assemblyman call you up personally? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, one thing that really impressed me about you is well, like, wow, you. they call, he called them up and talked to them. Thank you. And tried to help them out. So, support this man. Thank you very yeah, much. Definitely. What impressed me is he made me woman of the year last year. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? I mean, I see, here, you're talking to a woman of the year. <laughs> woman if you ever go year. to Sacramento, I want to encourage all of you to go to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. If you go to Sacramento to the California History of Women, uh, you will be able to see our, our, our woman of the year, uh, and she will be there. And there's a little biography of her. And it says Native Voice TV on there. For, and forever, is forever it a, is it a bust, or is it just a picture? <laughs> it's a just picture. A picture. <laughs> <laughs> so go to Sacramento for a bust. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so, <laughs> but that was a real honor. And well, thank you. I mean, you've done so much for the community, yeah. and all you're, the different and you're there, yeah. and I think that's so important to all of us. And we yeah. really thank you for your support of the community and what you, you know, and what you're going to do for us in your next term. Well, of for years. everyone, well, yeah, well, yeah that, for all I the mean, different communities. Those, those, the, you know, the, the one is the the charter school legislation yeah. for for uh, as again a prototype. What's the best way to deal with those issues of native youngsters who are falling through the cracks, who are not mm -hmm. staying in school, not graduating. That's an important piece of legislation for it next is, year. It is. But, uh, you know, it's, to, to me as a resident, uh, you know, it's important to have indigenous people represent us at mm -hmm. the Capitol. And I think that's why it's important for, for our people to vote, mm -hmm. our people to vote and, you know, yeah, keep people like you in office. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Very important. So we. Um, you must say no. <laughs> I want to really thank you for being here because oh, I, I know you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Well, you know, if I'd be back, I want to come we, back we again. We will right? have you back. We will have you back. Um, Simon Salinas was here, yes. and I felt guilty. I said, "Oh no, you know, he's here before Joe, and yeah, yeah. and I wanted Joe here, <laughs> but well, he said he would come back, and we well, definitely want you." We'll back. definitely have you back after the election. Very good. Thank That's you. That's right. Yes. Thank you. And then, uh, please, as soon as uh, as soon as. Um, the governor signs uh, 2641, the sacred skies legislation. I want to get you a copy, and then maybe you can talk about it at the next show. You no, know, I was thinking about it. We could blow it up and there we put go. it on put it one. Right there. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> put you it know, right blow there. it up and make it like a poster, <laughs> or you know, make it like a poster. And say, hey. Is it when he signs it, do they have a big old ceremony They'll and everything? You know, a lot of times they have a big ceremony. And well, they and should. Revive. I mean, this is important I legislation. I think yeah. so too. I think, I think so we should too. go up and cover it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. But I know there's been a lot of demonstrations at different times I've been up there, and there's a lot of different issues with, um, I guess, disenrollment of different tribes and so forth, which the government really can't get involved in yeah. because of each tribe being a sovereign nation. But I know there's been a lot of demonstrations mm -hmm. that we've been invited to, you know, to cover up there mm -hmm. at the Capitol. Yeah. And you always hear the drums beating out there, I'm sure. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, I just have one word to say about that is unite. Yeah. All nations unite and help each other. Because be yeah, people. you'd be a stronger people, make a federation of, of different nations or whatever, but unite. You know. Right. 
Well, a couple announcements I have. October 28th at the Indian Health Center, they're having a comedy jam. Oh, yeah. And they have four comedians coming out to so support that uh, event. Mm -hmm. And the Indian Health Center has tickets for that. I know it's going to be a great Still on sale, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And November 2nd at San Jose City Hall, we're going to have um, vendors and dancers and a lot of educational materials, which is long overdue. Because I don't think San Jose has really done anything to no. acknowledge. No. A Native American Heritage Month, so um, but we're going to call it Indigenous Celebration, which it should be, and um, it'll be a real nice program. Yeah, we yeah. want to try to get a library in San Jose, Native uh, Indigenous Library. That would be nice. You know, in fact, I was uh, this past uh, uh, Thursday, Wednesday, I was in San Francisco, mm -hmm. where they're b building a museum in Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. and they have they've already bought the building. And they're doing fundraising now for building the uh, the exhibits, but they're not going to be museums where, uh, kind of like you go to a museum where you just stand there and see an exhibit. But these are going to be hands-on, so oh, great. they will be as so that you'll be able to go in there and oh, cool. go to a sweat lodge and go and oh, do wow. you know other make a other, fire, make a fire, do the whole cool. thing. So it's going to be exciting. That's great. You know, I, I saw some out. really nice cultural centers in, in New Mexico. Yes, of course. Yeah. So uh, we need something here in San Jose. Oh, definitely. Say. Yes, we do. I think we're out of time. Oh, yes. We're so always we'll be on next Sunday at 6 o'clock. And thank you again, again Joe, thank for you. being here. Thank you. Really it's a pleasure. Thank you. Very much. Nice to thank see you. you. Good. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Yeah, Good night. Tune in for next week.